Hey guys, how are you going and welcome to your 21st Svelte tutorial. This one is going to be on auto subscriptions to your stores and store bindings. Okay, so um, the prerequisite for today's video is going to be knowledge of stores in Svelte. Um, but if you watch the previous video, it's going to be the perfect um, continue on for this one. So essentially, we're going to be uh, changing the code which we saw in the previous tutorial in order to make it a lot shorter but also achieve the exact same thing. So definitely watch the previous video if you haven't already done so, as we're going to be reusing the same code. Okay, so um, for those of you who are not too sure or they didn't see my previous video, essentially right here we've got this mini application which um, just uh, is going to um, change the value of my name right up here from within a store or using a store. Okay, so going inside the browser, we're going to get something like this. As we can see, we're able to change this name variable right here, depending on what I put inside this input box. So for example, I can say DOM and I can say set and it's going to change that name. I can say something like, uh, let's just do decode, then press append and it's going to append decode right there. So that is what we're going to be changing. We're going to be changing all of this code right here to use auto subscriptions instead. So what are auto subscriptions? Basically, they're just a cleaner way to interact with your stores. Okay, so let's change this code right here in order to achieve that. So the first thing to do is we're going to be removing um, this name value and we're going to replace it with a dollar sign followed by the name of your store. In this case, the name of my store is actually name. So I'm going to put dollar sign name right there. So now this right here is an automatic subscription to my store value, which means as my store value changes, it's going to update this. Now, this doesn't require this right here. I can get rid of this code. It's still going to work. Of course, we're going to remove this one right up here as well because it's no longer being used. So we can get rid of that also. And we can also get rid of the on destroy like that. And we're going to get the exact same result. So look at that. We've changed the code from almost, almost half. So we've almost halved this code and achieved the same thing. So now saving this and going inside the browser, we can give it a go. So let's change this to be, for example, um, bottle, press set. And it's going to be bottle right there. Let's say water, append, and it's going to append the water. So it's working in the exact same way as it did previously. This time, the code is a lot shorter. Okay, so really, you're just adding a dollar sign, and it's going to automatically subscribe um, you to that store, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, let's head inside the edit name and do a very similar thing. So this one isn't going to be as drastic, because this update and sets are currently quite straightforward anyway. So um, in order to change this, it's going to be quite straightforward. We're going to simply just do name for the update. It's going to be name, okay, uh, name using the dollar sign right there. Um, to achieve an append, it's going to be dollar sign name plus equals, and then we're going to say comma space then plus the value right there. Okay, so just, that's just a simple append plus equals and the comma and the value. Now, when it comes to the set, once again, very straightforward. It's going to simply just be dollar sign name equals and then we can say value right there. And that's going to do the exact same thing as we saw previously. So saving this and going inside the browser, we can test this out. Let's append, for example, um, fan, append, and we get fan right there. Let's give it uh, let's give it decode once again set and it goes to decode. Let's give it DOM set and it goes to DOM. So, like I said earlier, that is a definitely uh, a more straightforward and cleaner way to deal with your stores. Obviously, this is going to be up to you, your own personal preference, whatever works best for you in your scenario. Okay, um, when you're using custom stores, this may not be an option for you, uh, depending on whether or not you expose the update and the set uh, methods. Um, but for writable stores, basic stores, this right here is probably the way to go. Now, what about our store bindings? Well, it's actually quite straightforward. So we can see right here we are we are simply binding uh, the value of this actual input field with uh, this variable right here. So 
what if I want to actually bind the input field with the store value? Okay, so let's go down here. We're going to just um, let's replace this right here, this uh, this uh, bind colon value with equals, and then we can pass in here the name. Okay, so now it's sort of going to invalidate um, all of this stuff right up here. So we can just leave it the way it is. That's perfectly fine, but. Um, Essentially now it is going to bind the value of the store with the input field itself Which means if I go back inside here, we get decode inside there if I was to change this We can see it is changing up there Okay, so you're able to bind an input field directly with your um, your actual store value using dollar sign and then your store name as we saw earlier and that right there is order subscriptions and store bindings thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one